Why do we have to age, to become weak and frail, to have to deal with more and more limitations as we are getting older, such as less physical mobility, reduced strength and dexterity, memory loss and many many other declining cognitive functions? But what if we could reverse this natural process of aging, or at least postpone it further and therefore live longer? I made a video on immortality a while ago, in this one right now I will cover more information on aging and immortality, successful experiments and more interesting ideas, all of which I did not cover in the first one. There were many comments under the previous video of people complaining that immortality is not natural, we are not meant to live forever, some say immortality is reserved only for the gods, many people were concerned about depression or lack of purpose, but after all, is it actually natural to age and die? I mean, is it not actually natural what we do, fight entropy by creating better and better tools to sustain ourselves, help other species and the planet as well? Yes, we may cause some harm on the way, but I think we quickly come to account for it and fix our mistakes after. Is it not natural that when something harms an organism, that this same organism would develop protective mechanisms to fight against the cause that harms it? We are so much used of saying that everything we create, all the spaces we inhabit and all the tools we use are not natural. But we as creatures of nature are natural, right? So how come then what we create is not natural? Think about it. Our mother in nature strives for perfection to my opinion. And this perfection is rendered also in what we do, what we create and what we aim for. Yes, you might say we destroy habitats and the environment. Yes, we do sometimes. But I think in general, we construct more than that. You might say the planet is better without us and there will be eternal harmony and balance in nature if we cease to exist. Well, that will be the case only until the next asteroid hits. Now, our longevity depends on some factors like food, physical activity, mental state and environment. We can extend our lifespans by a couple of decades by changing some of these which are under our control like healthier lifestyle with proper physical activity and proper diet. Which is pretty good. But scientists are now focusing on the deeper levels of our biology to figure out ways to not only slow down aging but even stop the process of aging whatsoever. Why does aging appear? Well, in consensus with the latest understanding of it, this is a natural process in humans that is marked by the decreased ability of the body to regenerate itself and increased error frequency in our tissues, organs, DNA and cells over time, leading to impaired function and increased vulnerability to disease and eventually death. More recently, scientists have determined that there are deep biological factors that are inherent in the process of aging in our bodies. This relatively new model involves several criteria that are intrinsic to the aging process. Scientists refer to them as the hallmarks of aging. Genomic instability, loss of proteostasis, cellular senescence and accumulation of dead cells, epigenetic alterations, just to name a few. These hallmarks are related to processes at intercellular and genomic level. Take one of them for instance, genomic instability. One common denominator of aging is the accumulation of genetic damage throughout life. The stability of our DNA is challenged at all times by external physical, chemical and other agents and some internal factors such as errors that occur during DNA replication. To minimize these damages, organisms such as our human body have evolved a complex network of DNA repair mechanisms that are capable of dealing with most of the damage inflicted to our DNA. The length of the end caps of our chromosomes, called telomeres, which are another key hallmark of aging, depends on those defense mechanisms as well. Nowadays, telomere length is considered the holy grail of aging. Over time, shortened telomeres fail to help with regenerating certain tissues in our body, which in turn leads to the accumulation of senescent zombie cells. The accumulation of senescent cells over time leads to the development of diseases. Experiments with mice have shown a stable link between the length of the telomeres and aging. Shortened telomeres account for shorter lifespan, lengthened telomeres respectively to longer lifespan. Moreover, there are successful experiments with mice where aging can be reverted back simply by activating telomeres in already prematurely aged mice. But not only in mice, in humans too. Data have shown the same relation of telomere length to aging in humans. Just over a couple of years ago, an Israeli breakthrough study proved we can slow down and even regenerate the length of our telomeres by a huge percent. The study involved the procedure of repeated, intermittent, hyperoxic exposures using hyperbaric oxygen chambers. The hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a therapeutical procedure based on the exposure of pure, near 100% oxygen in a chamber at minimum of two absolute atmospheres, or two times the atmospheric pressure at sea level. The study was done by researchers at Tel Aviv University, 30 independently living participants, 16 men and 14 women took part in the study. All of them were aged 64 and older, and all of them having no major leading physical illnesses. They were put through 60 hyperbaric oxygen chamber exposures in the course of 3 months at 5 sessions per week. 
the researchers took blood samples from the participants beforehand to set a baseline at the 30th and 60th session and two weeks after the whole procedure. The results? Well, all of them experienced considerable increase in their telomere length by over 20%, up to 37% in some types of telomere cells. The most significant change happened in the 30th session, and a great decrease in senescent cells occurred as well. These are those same zombie cells that accumulate over time in our bodies, inflaming their neighboring cells, thus increasing the risk of severe diseases as we age. Here the participants saw another significant drop of up to 37% of some of those zombie cells. Now, this study is still limited data, only a few dozen participants above the age of 64 and the effectiveness of the results yet to be determined in the long term, but these results are too impressive to just be ignored like that. Another important hallmark of aging are the epigenetic alterations that happen to our body over time. Epigenetics is the study of the biological changes in the cell functionality we undergo as we age, which does not involve alterations in our DNA sequence. The epigenome helps the way our DNA is getting packaged in our cells and controls the process of blocking some cells and allowing other. Basically, the epigenome controls which parts of the DNA turn on and off. Also, the epigenome is what tells our cells what types of cells there will be. Professor Dr. Sinclair, one of the most prominent scientists in the field of biology of aging, believes that the main reasons for aging can be found in our epigenome. Because the epigenome is the one that loses the ability to do its work as we age, it loses important information over time. As Dr. Sinclair likes to say, aging is simply a loss of information. This is part of an ongoing understanding of what aging is, the so-called information theory of aging. Scientists who support this theory, among which Dr. Sinclair, think that aging mainly occurs because of loss of epigenetic information over time. Our cells contain the old information of our younger DNA, but lose the ability to read it after each replication because of epigenetic noise that accumulates with time. One way to track this noise is by looking at DNA methylation patterns. Over time, DNA methylation accumulates on places it should not. Our bodies have two different types of information. We all know about the DNA. Now there's another type of information that most people don't know about, it's called the epigenome, and it's the reader of the DNA. Like, if you have a compact disc, it's like scratches on the compact disc so you can't read the music. As we get older, we lose the ability to read our DNA correctly. And so how do we get those scratches off? We had this breakthrough a couple of years ago, and so we found that there was a, a way to get the scratches off and reverse the age of cells. In 2012, scientist Shinya Yamanaka won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of four important reprogramming factors, which when applied in gene therapies can transform adult cells into induced pluripotent stem cells, or otherwise said to reset the epigenome of a particular cell. Three of those factors Dr. Sinclair and his team used in a therapy to reset the vision of prematurely aged mice, which were blind at the time of the experiment, and got their vision back afterwards. Now the doctors are trying to reverse the aging of different other parts of the body. So these are mini wow. human brains we've grown for a number of months and these ones have been aged so that they're 70 years old and we can measure their activity and their brain activity is slowing down as they get older. They're full of inflammation like a normal old brain would be and in this experiment we're now testing can we reverse the age of those brains so they work again and the answer is yeah we can do that. In the end of 2019, another scientist, Greg Fahey, and his group published their discoveries on aging. They were focused on the thymus, the master gland of our immune system. The thymus produces the so-called T-cells, which are the soldiers who fight with all kinds of inflammatory diseases, bacteria and cancer in our body. The problem is that as we age, the consistency of the thymus gets exhausted and as a result, a part of it gradually gets replaced with fat. Within the age of 62 and 78 or so, the function of the immune system is reduced dramatically and our bodies lose more than 90% of their ability to fight with any kind of disease. But Greg's team has already found ways and have done successful experiments on regenerating and returning the thymus to healthier states which possibly could be done on humans in near future. Being able to do that, we could easily boost our immune systems and push death further. There's this, been this theoretical concept of longevity escape velocity out there in which a year goes by and your biology doesn't change. We went beyond that. After one year of treatment in, in our trial, uh, the guys were one and a half years younger than they were when they started treatment, before they started treatment.
Nowadays, science is moving faster than ever before thanks to the accumulation of scientific data and discoveries for the past few centuries. With the help of ever-advancing machines, gene sequencing methods, which I am planning for another video very soon by the way, and ever-advancing computing power at our disposal, it's getting easier to test and prove aging theories. A major challenge is to understand the connection between the effects of the hallmarks and their contribution to aging. While the final goal is to find the right pharmaceutical targets to improve human health during aging with minimal side effects. So, a good question is why are we spending so much money in research and treatment on age-related diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's and such, when we can focus major part of those fundings to simply target the root cause for all these illnesses, aging. There is simply no point to treat any of those one at a time when you can intervene and forestall such diseases with one single agent. There are at least a couple of dozen products that target fundamental aging processes in mice right now, and some allegedly have good effects on humans as well, like metformin, resveratrol, rapamycin, and others. It'd be cool if we'd have had the chance to live for at least a couple of centuries more. We wouldn't feel so pressured to create a family or perceive a career path. At least we would have the options to study longer, learn one, two, three, four, five different skills and choose the best that suits us. Receive a career path or build a business, but know that if we fail, we would have plenty of time to try again and again and again. Same if we try to create a family, but after 10-15 years we understand that we're just not made for each other. We would have plenty of time to find the right partner for us and not feel pressured by time. For me personally, I see the aim of immortality as one of the ultimate goals of life. This last final frontier of biology, defeating death, is going to change society entirely. And as death gives us a sense of urgency, immortality would bring us infinite wisdom. There is this thing in nature, whenever there is an agent that is harmful to another, the one that gets hurt learns to develop protective mechanisms against the first. This is what aging is to us, a process that harms every aspect of our biology and therefore we are trying to find a way to fight against it. Life on Earth, in general, has found a way to fight against death by reproducing and dividing itself. But since we have evolved our understanding of the natural processes such as aging and death, and became conscious of them, I feel like it's our duty to find a solution to forestall the process of our cells' senescence. And I will leave you with a question again. Do you think boredom is an inevitable part of an infinite life? Thanks for watching.